Hey guys, Dr. Justin Marcajani here. We're gonna be talking about electrolytes and your heart. So your heart's really an important organ, right? Pumps all your blood, takes up tons of energy, and it conducts electrically, and it needs electrolytes for it to work. We're gonna dive into how all this thing works. And before we do, please smash that like button. It really helps the search algorithm. Love to see your comments down below and love to know your thoughts on the topic. Okay, excellent. So we have our sinoatrial node and our atrioventricular node. These are nodes that essentially the heart has to communicate electrically. It needs electrolytes. So your most common ones are gonna be sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium. So for instance, when you have nerves work, you have action potential, right? Action potential, really important. You have this millivolt surge. It starts to get more and more and more and more negative. This is called depolarization. And then you have this influx of calcium where where this, the, the negative charge actually becomes back to neutral and you have an action potential and then it depolarizes again and becomes negative. So calcium is really important in your nerves working. Also, when you look at your cells, you have the sodium potassium pump. You have potassium, uh, you have essentially potassium on the inside, sodium on the outside, and then it does a switcherewski where I think it's two sodium go in, three potassium go out. It, it's this little switcheroo where sodium goes in, potassium goes out. This is very important. This is kind of how the cells communicate. It's called the sodium potassium pump. So if we dilute electrolytes, you see it every year, you know, come marathon time, someone drinks too much water, they overhydrate, and they develop what's called hyponatremia, low sodium, low electrolytes, and they have cardiac arrest. Their heart stops functioning because that electrolyte is essentially the liquid wiring to help conduct electrical charge in the body. So I see it quite frequently. Low potassium is super common, causing you know fatigue, mood issues, uh, energy issues, heart flutter. You'll see fasciculations where the muscles just kind of quiver, even full-on cramping. So the muscles, including the heart, which is probably the most active muscle through the body, sodium and potassium are vitally important, right? So I always recommend some high-quality sea salt in the water in the morning. That's super helpful. Um, good high quality Redmond's Real Salt, half a teaspoon twice a day is great. Uh, sodium, potassium is really important, right? Especially when you have adrenal issues, a lot of times if you give sodium just by itself, that can actually lower potassium because sodium and potassium have this intimate relationship. And so when you have extreme, extreme adrenal issues, extreme fatigue and adrenal dysfunction, we always want to give sodium and potassium together. Also, the hormone aldosterone, which is made by the adrenals, when we have adrenal dysfunction, we have stressed out adrenals because we're inflamed, because we have a lot of adrenal stress, whether it's inflammation from food, emotional stress, physical stress, it's going to be harder for us to hold on to our electrolytes when our adrenals are more stressed. And so adding in extra sodium, half a teaspoon, adding in extra potassium can be super helpful. Now, when we look at you know sodium on your typical blood test, usually the reference range is like, like in the 130s to 140s, you want to be in that middle part of the reference range when we look at your typical um, metabolic panel, which is part of a you know your typical blood test. You have your CBC, which looks at the, the size of your blood cells, your red blood cells, your white blood cells, your, your hemoglobin, your MCV, MCH, MCHC. Then you have your metabolic panel, which is going to look at electrolytes, including sodium, potassium, magnesium, serum, all serum all blood protein serum, and you're gonna want that want that electrolyte um, sodium to be like in that 130 to one, probably 140-ish is ideal. And on the potassium side, you wanna be you know four or above on the potassium. Again, these are, I look at these labs all day, so these are the numbers that are stuck in my head, but if you're looking at it from a reference range, somewhat in the middle and up is great. Now, you typically want about a gram or so of high quality sea salt a day. Again, sea salt has the effect to activate hormones, right? It's very, very powerful. There's a lot of hormone intermediaries there with a lot of these electrolytes. They help connect and help your hormonal system work. That's part of why your adrenals play such an important role holding on to electrolytes and sodium. When sodium goes awry, potassium goes awry. When potassium goes awry, your cells are not going to communicate. You're going to start to have heart rhythm issues. You start to have very low and slow heart rate. You start to have cramping, fasciculations, start to have dizziness, especially on body change. When you orthostatic, you change your body position and you come up, you can get dizzy. That's a strong sign that you have very low electrolytes, low sodium, low potassium. You can do an orthostatic hypotension test, lay down, get a blood pressure cuff around your, your brachial artery, hit the button, have it give you a reading, get up. Our blood pressure should be going up either neutral or up. If you have a drop in blood pressure when you stand up right away, that tells me you have some definite adrenal issues. Now again, most potassium-rich foods 
and sodium rich food. Sodium is usually not going to have a hard time getting it because it's in a lot of processed crap, right? But you're getting a lot of just junky sodium chloride that's bleached. Typically in nature, when you get sodium chloride, you're getting a whole bunch of minerals. You're getting a whole bunch of trace minerals. That's why I love the Redmond's Real Slot because you're getting 50, 60, 70 different minerals there. And a lot of these minerals are known as hormonal activators. Many people have, have referred to them as that. And so it's really important for healthy hormones, for healthy adrenals, and overall hormone health. We want to have good, healthy sea salt. We want to stay away from the process, just sodium and chloride that's bleached. We want to stay away from that. We want to use good, high-quality potassium citrate or potassium chloride is fine. You can get it from cream of tartar, new salt. I have a product called Potassium Synergy that's going to have potassium citrate in a 10 to 1 ratio of potassium to magnesium. That works great. Again, your, your biggest sources of potassium food-wise are going to be your avocado, your leafy greens, some of your starches like squash and sweet potato, uh, mushrooms, salmon, some of your meats too. But again, potassium, you need about 4,700 milligrams a day. Most people don't get close to that. And again, with your sodium chloride, usually about a gram or so, but you want the good stuff. That's why I recommend the Redmond's Real Salt. If you have heart issues, the rhythm, the rates, the low heart rate, I can't tell you how often I see people go in and then they're recommended a pacemaker because their heart rate is dropping and dropping and dropping. Well, we find that if we get their potassium levels up and their magnesium, they have a significant improvement and they may not necessarily need a pacemaker. Again, if your body needs nutrients and you're using drugs and surgery to cover up what your body actually needs, there's actually nutrients and fuel for it to work, that is not serving your body's highest good. You want to give your body what it needs so you get to the root cause, right? Root cause is always essential. And so when we look at electrolytes, you have to say, well, why do I have electrolyte issues to begin with? Do I have adrenal stress? When you are stressed and you are surging cortisol, you will dump lots of potassium. And more than likely, you'll Im impact sodium as well because they exist on a, on a seesaw relationship, so to speak. Uh, when you're inflamed, you'll dump minerals. You also burn through B vitamins too. Um, also, are you getting enough? Are you getting good quality sea salt or is it the processed stuff from your processed food? Are you getting enough potassium from leafy greens, from healthy safe starches, from healthy avocados? Are you getting enough there? Are you absorbing it? Are you taking enough hydrochloric acid and enzymes? That's essential as well. And I would say after that, um, how stressed are you? Are you sweating a lot? You may need more than typical, right? Roger Williams in his book, Biochemical Individuality, talked about people who needed potassium may need exponential higher amounts than someone else because of their stress levels, because of who they are. And so you have to look at the person as an individual and say, well, how much are you getting? Let's look at what a day looks like and let's see where you're at. And then let's try to fill in the gaps with high quality, good supplementation. And let's look at foods that you're eating and see if we can get more nutrient dense foods with those things on top of it. Also, supporting the adrenals helps a ton because if we can bump up the adrenal support, support pregnenolone, use licorice, support the adrenals to make more aldosterone. That's going to help your body hold on to more electrolytes as well, which will help the heart and all your muscles function better. And again, you know, things like diuretics, like coffee and caffeine and teas, they can cause you to lose more electrolytes. So you want to make sure you go over the top and hydrate and really get excellent electrolyte support out of the gates. So get your diet right, get the inflammation right. Um, get your insulin right. Too much carbohydrates will cause you to hold on to more sodium. Again, that's not necessarily a bad thing per se. Um, it, it's really a problem because you're holding on to more sodium because your insulin's up. So if you have electrolytes on board, you want to have electrolytes on board, but you don't want to be surging insulin because insulin essentially pulls sodium, sodium pulls water. So people that are, you'll see a lot of diabetics, they look very bloated, lots of water in their system. You see a lot of people with cankles, for instance, right? There's so much water in that area because the electrolytes are off because of insulin surging. So we don't want sodium high because of insulin being out of whack. We want our insulin just right. We don't want to be oversurging our carbs, driving our insulin up too high, which then could you know, skew that off, the, off the, uh, the track, so to speak. So you want to look at your blood sugar, your carbohydrates. You want to look at supplementation. What can you do there? Look at your foods. Look at your adrenals. Look at your stress. Get your adrenals looked at and tested and see how your cortisol looks throughout the day. If you have rhythm issues um, is, and you have lower high cortisol, there could be some aldosterone and mineral corticoid problems that you need to support. All right, guys, if you want to dive in deeper, there'll be a link down below where you can reach out to my staff. My team will be happy to help you out. We see patients functional medicine-wise worldwide. There'll be a link down there, coordinates where you can schedule and reach out. All right, guys, have a phenomenal day. Take care.